Hi everyone, my name is Scott Halperin and welcome back to the world of medicine and today we are going to talk about the gift of life bone marrow registration drive that I just did this past week. So this past week I did a gift of life bone marrow registration drive which is I think the fourth or fifth registration drive I've done in the last several years or so. And one of the reasons why I do it is because it is so important to find a bone marrow transplant match when it is absolutely crucially needed. One of the reasons why it's needed is for difficult to impossible to treat lymphomas and leukemias and other similar type blood disorders. And to find a match, it can be incredibly difficult. Unfortunately, it can be even more difficult in more diverse populations. In the, for example, in the black population, you're, you're only able to find a match around 25% of the time. And then if you're Asian, Latino, or Hispanic, or, or, or other cultures, it can be around 40 or 45% or, or so. But either way, it can be incredibly hard to find a match for anyone. One of the ways that they find a match is that they match up your HLA subtype to try and find the best possible donor for the, for the person who needs it the most. And the best way to do that is to have as large of a registry as possible because when someone needs it, they usually need it pretty quickly. And so if you have a database of people available, to give a donation, then you're optimizing the patients as much as possible, which is why I love to do these bow and marrow registration drives. And because I've been doing them for a while, for five or six years or so now, it actually, every once in a while, even though I haven't, I haven't registered thousands of people, it's been several hundreds of people, but even with that several hundreds of people, I get emails that, that matches have been found that literally are saving somebody's life when they need it the absolute most. And that's why I love doing bone marrow registration drives. So this past week I did a bone marrow registration drive at my medical school, which is Yale. And I made this announcement leading up to the registration to, to tell people about what's going on. Uh, I am a fifth year student. I'm also the president of the Maimonides Society, which is the uh, Jewish Medical Student Group Association. Um, it's nice to meet you all, happy to connect in any way. Um, I'm also running a bone marrow registration drive with the gift of life in the back. Um, if you have registered before for any other uh, organization other than gift of life, um, it is not recommended to, to register again because they're all a conglomerate together. Um, but feel free to grab a cookie if you've done it before. And if you haven't done it, uh, please come back. Uh, it takes probably I, ideally, it takes like a minute, probably at most three or four minutes. Uh, it's a pretty quick sign up, and to register, you uh, there's a, a Q-tip that you swab inside your cheek, and they're actually able to get some of your DNA cells that way. Um, you just give like your name and a little bit more information so that they can contact you. So after this announcement, I had a ton of questions coming in. Of course, it was a, a shorter announcement, but people had questions. People wanted to jump in and help. And so while people were registering, they were signing up online, and then with a Q-tip, they swab the inside of their cheeks, which the cells on the inside of your cheeks fall off pretty easily, so they're able to do a little bit of cell and DNA analysis, um, just for kind of baseline, more demographic-like information. So when they need a match, they're not emailing the whole world, they try and get five to 10 people or so, and then they do further blood types for their blood testing to see who would be the best match possible. And with all these questions, it was, uh, were amazing. It's always great to, to have a lot of questions and to hear people's concerns. Of course, many people's concerns are, what is the donation like? So first of all, it's incredibly rare to be needed to be a donor. I've been a donor for probably 10 years or so now almost. And I have not been asked. Most people are never asked. But if you are, if by chance you are asked, that does not mean that you are immediately the best donor. They have to do some blood tests. 
They do health screening to make sure you're physically fit and healthy to do it. And they, cause of course they don't want anything to happen to the, to the donors. And so they do a few other screenings. So if you are by off chance selected, and then if by off chance you are uh, screened and you happen to be the best donor possible for the patient, then they do a few things to, to, to get you ready for a possible donation. Of course, at any time along the way, a donor can say, I'm sorry, this isn't for me. I really hope you find someone and they'll go to the next person on the list. They'll do further testing. And so it is understandable to feel nervous. But if you are selected by off chance, around 80% of the time, I like to say it's a glorified blood donation. What they do is that they give you a medication to help your bone marrow cells that are living inside of your bones on a, on a healthy person, that they help those cells be emitted into your bloodstream. And then what they do is they do something that's very similar to a platelet donation, where they take out your blood, they filter it for those cells that they really want, and then they put it back in the other arm. And it's a four or so hour procedure. You're sitting there the whole time, probably most likely you're, you're on your phone. Leading up to the, the bone marrow donation uh, from people that I've heard of who have donated this way, they usually feel a little bit uncomfortable, but for the most part, there are no issues. And again, it is like complete life-saving work that you're doing. So that's 80% of the time. On the other hand, about 20% of the time, they do do a, they do go into generally your iliac crest, with, which is in your pelvis, and they're able to take out bone marrow cells that way. And that's done under general anesthesia. And more times than not, that is an outpatient procedure. You leave a couple hours later. Again, there might be some mild discomfort, but overall these things go on with, uh, without any hiccups at all. And again, it, it, it's life-saving. It's one of the most tangible procedures where the person utmost needs it, and then they find a donor, and that person survives which is absolutely incredible. One of the other questions that I get is that I registered with, an other, with another organization like Be The Match or one of the other ones. Should I register again with the gift of life? And it is not necessary to register again. When they need a match, they pull all the registries to make sure that they are not missing anyone and it is not needed to, to do another uh, registration. Another question that I get is, why do they need all this information? I'm just signing up for the registry. Why do they need all these things? Why do they need my address and my phone number and some of these other things? Why do they need a second contact? And the reason for that, especially for younger people who are registering, is ideally you'd be in the registration for decades because you're young, you're healthy still, and you'll, you'll be an available donor for a long time. And what they wanna do is that they wanna have enough information that if in 15 years from now, they find someone that might need a match that you're able to be connected with, is that they still wanna be able to find you. And so they need enough information, phone numbers, a few other things, and then they, they can usually track you down that way via the other resources that they have. In summary, I think it's only natural to be nervous when you're doing this. Of course, being selected for a donor can be a little bit nerve wracking. I think that when you're putting it all into perspective and that you can go through some discomfort, I'm not minimizing any discomfort or any uh, unforeseen adverse events that of course can happen but are incredibly rare. You are very tangibly saving someone when they need it at their absolute most, when they have leukemia or lymphoma or similar blood disorders and chemotherapy hasn't been working and treatment isn't going well, they turn to this last resort. And as someone who's going into medicine and who's prides themselves on trying to help people when they need it most, I find it incredibly rewarding to be in, in the registry, ready to be called into action to help someone who might need it and, and to be there to save their life um, so clearly. So that wraps up today's video for today. Um, please check out some information below. I'll leave 
uh, the gift of life website below. You can get some more information, potentially find a registration near you and feel free to check it out. And don't forget to comment any questions that I can maybe help with. Have a great day, everyone. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn your notifications on. Have a great day.